right, so I went to the big box store, pick one, doesn't matter. Picked up some 1x4s that we're going to start this project with, and kind of random. Uh, this is, I, I actually do have some maple here I'm going to use as well. It's got some finish on it, we're just going to run this through the planer. The uh, bed frame I made is made out of pine, so we're just going to make this to match. Any random 2x4s, I'm going to run these all through the planer this way a couple times just to get most of these uh, rounded edge off. And I might run them through the planer this way as well, just to clean them up. And then uh, we'll get to the next step. Alright, so I've finished planing down all of our 1x4s or whatever scrap wood you have, doesn't really matter. It's all the same thickness. Uh, next I'm actually going to make a new crosscut sled just for this build uh, so that I can make the angle of the blade enough to make our hexagon and cut through the board at the same time. I'm going to use a piece of three quarter inch plywood that I found, just scrap on the shop. It's pretty flat and good enough. And what I'm going to do here is I've got a piece of maple that is the right size for my slider here. So I'm going to cut a strip off of this, we'll set this board in place, we'll glue the bottom, let it sit for about 20 minutes. I'll flip it over and just run a couple screws through. Then that way I've got something to, uh, as a guide. Then I've also got a piece of hickory that I plane down square. We're going to glue that down approximately here. We'll use a five cut method just to get this square. Once that's square, then I can use that to, uh, line up our our stock with the blade and then we'll use the I'm just gonna screw on the toggle clamp onto this that's why I've got this piece here so that I can lock it in place that way nothing's gonna shift around I don't have to hold it as easily or as don't have to hold it as much. Thought I might add in a couple quick steps on making this. So I've cut my strip to pretty thin. I've got a spacer underneath. I just put a two couple strips of tape just to keep the glue from hitting the table. Uh, it's up just by maybe a sixteenth of an inch. I just put a really small strip of glue on there. A couple weights will let that sit for about half an hour, just enough so I can pull it out. I'll flip it over and I'll run about four screws through into the plywood. All right, so what I did is I just went online and found a stave calculator just to figure out what my angles were. And what we want for a hexagon that we're gonna make is uh, 120 degree on the inside angle when you divide that enough you actually want your blade tilted to 30 degrees and it actually doesn't need to be perfect and I'll show you why so all I used is one of these little leveling boxes I set it to 30 degrees as close as I could and then what we're going to do is we'll cut our six pieces out just some a test piece and we'll see how it lines up I'm not going to go I've just got a piece of scrap one by four whatever you have, but what we want to do is make sure that our lengths are always the same. So we're just going to clamp down a stop block for testing and get a better clamp. size here doesn't matter as long as all six pieces are the same length and then we'll test to make sure we get a good fit. I've also uh, bolted on or screwed on just a, a hold down so that if you have a long piece it's not going to wobble on you. So first we'll cut off the end. I'll cut my six pieces and we'll line them up. What I did here is I just used my fence, lined them all up, piece of masking tape on the back, roll it up, and basically you're just going to roll it up like you're 
rolling up any thing with tape for gluing and I'll bring that actually closer to the camera. So you can see here, everything is nice and tight. And we didn't have to worry about how accurate our blade was. So on our one by fours that we've got, I just took the long pieces, cut them in half, because easy to manage. We'll cut our first set. There, so got some of these lined up here. Put some tape on them. Just like you're making a four-sided box with mitered corners. It's all the same, really. Again, all we did is make the length of these a bit longer to make a bigger hexagon. There we go. All our corners are nice and tight. I did notice on some of them that there is going to be a bit of a gap. But if there is, it's only because the board itself has got a bit of a bow to it, even though we ran these through the planer. It's just pine. It's not great wood. But we're going to be staining it anyways. There we go. All right, just wanted to show what happens like so on these ones we're just going to stain them and paint them so it doesn't really matter on the inside some of these there are some slight gaps here it's actually hard to tell on the pine i actually did some maple as well the smaller ones actually turned out quite nice the inside there's almost no gap there they turned out good some of the bigger ones however you can actually quite, on the better wood, you can notice that there are some gaps. When you tighten this up, you can see a gap at the bottom. Right there. So it's the angles aren't perfect. They're a little bit off. So on this one, I've actually corrected it. There's no play in this. This isn't even glued. All I have is tape on it. There's no movement. Every seam is nice and tight. So to get that, when you have better wood, I've actually made an adjustment on the saw here. So on our pieces here, if we had the gap on the inside, it means our blade, we're running this way, blade is too tilted this way. So what we want to do is bring the blade up a little bit more this way and recut all these edges. So that's what I did here, is I put the stop block back on the other side of the blade. I've tilted the blade up probably about 0.2 degrees. And then what I'm going to do is I'll make one cut this way. I'll put an eighth inch spacer here, flip it around and recut it. And then that'll bring us to the tight version of these, uh, these blocks. I'm going to take this one apart. I'll recut all these. And yeah, so you have a couple different ways of doing it, depending on what your finish is going to be. All right, so the next step here is we're just going to take our tape off. I think I double wrapped that. I don't know why. And just a 100 grit sandpaper. Just gonna round out the corners. Do a quick sanding on the outside here. just want the stain grade really for this project so on a grit quick sanding is uh, pretty much all we need and we'll do that to the rest of them that we've got piled up back here and then we'll start assembling these into a pattern we'll connect these like this we'll do another one another one on top and we'll do that after. okay so we've got all our pieces sanded you could uh, stain them as they are, I guess, and stick them on the wall, use them as whatever you want, really. So 
What, uh, what we want to do here is a pattern like this. Probably can't see that in the reflection of the sun. There, so that's kind of the pattern we want to go with. I've clamped the straight edge to the back of the table so that we can keep these all straight. We're going to clamp this like that. Clamping blocks here that we're going to use. And this one is going to go right here. So using the back of the table, to keep that straight. We're going to glue and clamp these together. All right, so at this stage we have everything glued together. I took a random orbital sander and just sanded off the outside edge just to clean up all the seams that would have any glue squeezed out on both sides. Then uh, just going to break the edges on all sides after sanding it. We'll dust it off and then we will uh, stain it to whatever color you want, really. All right, here we've got one of the final pieces done. I've still got one more coat of clear coat to put on it. So once you've got the hexagons, you can rearrange them into pretty much any pattern you like. Here is a second one as well. You can see this one's got, they're a little bit different. So you can hang these on the wall this way. What I've got on here is a black stain. Then I've got two coats of the General Finishes Armor Seal. I've sanded it down with a 400 grit after the second coat, and then I'm gonna do a final really, really light coat at the end here just for a third coat, just to get rid of any of the, the whiteness that you get from the final sanding. And that's it, then we can hang them on the wall. I'll show a picture of that when we're done here. And that's it.